So the next drive that we want to focus on is pack drive. So in competitive obedience, pack drive is one of the most beneficial drives. And the reason for that is you can take a dog with pack drive who perhaps has very little play drive and perhaps we have to enhance that play drive or has zero prey drive or almost zero prey drive or very little food drive and you can still get a really electric, electric vibrant obedience routine out of that dog. Essentially what pack drive is, is the dog's willingness to work and please the handler or please the pack leader. Um, typically dogs with high levels of pack drive are, are more of your beta dog, it's not going to be an alpha dog, it's the dog that really wants to work the, with, with that handler. It also is important that you have a good relationship with that dog when you're developing the pack drive. So if you have a dog that's overly submissive, you're not going to get the most out of that dog's pack drive because the dog is a little squishy and perhaps a little bit um, submissive. Likewise, if you have a dog that is very dominant and you don't um, have a good relationship with the dog in terms of around the home, you don't have your pack uh, order straight, then that dog is not going to give the illusion um, or, or really it's, it's really not going to have a, a good obedience routine because that dog's not being a little bit sub submissive to you. Um, so in competitive obedience, it's a little contradictory because what we're asking for is a dog that looks like it's an alpha dog, but is actually a little bit of a beta dog. A dog that's really animated, it looks like it's dynamic and in charge, yet is also very responsive to commands. And that's where the drive work comes in. Adding to the concept of pack drive, it's uh, really important to focus on how you house your dog. This drive is, is extremely dependent upon your relationship with your dog because it's all about relationship building. Uh, if your dog is loose in the house all the time and perhaps uh, jumping on the bed or sleeping on the bed and, and being very pushy, you're not going to have a dog that's, gonna, that's going to give the illusion of, of being um, responsive to you necessarily in obedience. You might be utilizing another drive state. For example, you might be utilizing play drive to get the desired behavioral results that you're looking for in the competitive obedience field, but you're not gonna really be utilizing the pack drive. So with pack drive, if you really wanna enhance that drive, home environment is key. It's super important to keep your dog um, in a state where they're very balanced. In other words, they're not gonna be dominant over you, nor are they gonna be submissive. So that's really where the, the art and, and craft of pack drive drive or balancing the pack drive lies is in the home environment, the housing, the controlling of the resources, um, how much time or interaction you give them, which sort of plays into the housing environment. So if your dog's with you all the time, they might take the pack leader for granted a little bit. So you might exercise some isolation with the pack drive. So this is uh, isolation, and, and when I say isolation, that might be something as simple as maybe putting your dog um, outside in the backyard or perhaps crating them for a couple hours prior to your obedience routine. So if you're trying to enhance the pack drive in your obedience work, Simply utilize some of those tools, house management, isolation, how much tactile stimulation or, or petting that you give the dog, touching, that sort of thing. Um, if you want to enhance the pack drive, you take all of that away. You would isolate your dog a little bit more. You maybe don't put your hands on your dog or pet your dog quite as much. You might control the resources a little more. All of those little subtleties really lend to the overall um, development of pack drive.